Yeah. Having a hassle over. I'll stand over here if it helps. I'm sorry. Thank you. Can we agree that out of all the people involved, you were in the best position to know if this was all making a fuss about? Yes. I mean, you were the person that was there at the Circle K earlier with Raul. Yes. You knew exactly how bad or not bad that situation was. Yes. You were the person who could have said, honey, you know what? It's not worth it. It's not a big deal. Let it go. This is really getting out of hand. Yes. And you knew that the entire way as all this is progressing. Yes. Okay. Let me retrieve a video a second. minutes and 25 seconds on the video. This is you, right? Yes, it is. This kind of orangey colored tank top. Yes. gentleman coming in in the blue shirt. This is Mr. Ortiz, right? Yes, it is. This is your only interaction with Mr. Ortiz on August 11th at a Circle K, right? Yes. There's no other time that you interact with him. No. So whatever happened between you and Mr. Ortiz, whatever inappropriate thing he might have done, it happened here on this video. Yes. contact with Mr. Ortiz face to face, personal and direct on August 11th. Yes. And it's your position that in those 10 seconds he was looking at you inappropriately and saying inappropriate things to you? I felt uncomfortable, yes. Okay, and I understand you felt uncomfortable, but now looking back at it, now that you're not in the moment, you agree he's not like leaning on his tiptoes trying to stare down your shirt, right? No, he wasn't. I never said he was. You agree that what really happens is he comes in, he leans in as if trying to talk to the clerk, he then looks at you, realizing he's too close, and the first thing he does is he actually kind of backs away from you. Isn't that what happens? Yes. Yes, that's what happens. When he looks at you and realizes he's so close, he actually backs away. That's what happens. Right? Yes. He didn't make a motion to touch you. No, he didn't touch He me. didn't try and touch your breasts. No. He didn't stand staring at you, fixated on your chest, did he? No. Okay. And what really happened is you had come back in to buy some energy pouches for your mom, because there was like an energy pouch thing your mom liked to drink. Yes. That's what you're standing at the counter buying. Yes. And when he turns and looks at you, what he actually does is he asks you if you're buying cigarettes. Isn't that true? No, I don't speak Spanish. I did not understand what he was Okay. Asking. Well, let me play it again. Maybe you can hear it. Did he just ask 
you, are you going to buy cigarettes? I heard cigarettes, but I couldn't quite understand the rest. So clearly, he's not saying anything sexual to you if he's talking about cigarettes, right? No. In fact, the very next thing that happens as he walks away is he yells to the clerk, she's too young to buy them, isn't that? Yes. So he's trying to tell the clerk not to sell you cigarettes because he thinks you're buying cigarettes. Mm -hmm. There's nothing sexual happening in this moment, is there? No. You knew that. Sure. But you still told Aaron that Mr. Ortiz had looked at you inappropriately and said inappropriate things to you. I said he was too close to me. Okay. Now, the day progresses. You meet up with Aaron. You tell Aaron this. Can we agree that Aaron's response to you telling him is to get mad? He didn't, he got a little upset, but I wouldn't say mad really. Did you put on the record what the number was? That was number 10, I apologize. Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. He was, you say upset. Yes. Well, I'll use the word upset. He was so upset that what he decided to do was he decided to flag down Danielle, who was driving down the street, not at the Circle K, and wave her over to have a face-to-face -face conversation with her. Yes. That's what happened. Yes. And you guys back up in the parking lot of the Circle K and wait for her to pull in. You don't even, like, get window to window. You get out of the car, the both of you, and walk over to her car to have a face-to-face -face conversation. Yes, sir. And so Aaron's just upset? He's not mad? He just wanted to tell her to tell him, you know, to not do it again and that I have, I want to talk to him, basically. Okay. And so once he tells her the message that he wants conveyed to Raul through Danielle, he was satisfied, right? Yes. You guys parted ways. Yes. There was no intention of having any further conversations with Raul. No, sir. Then what changes... Give me a second, I need some water. I apologize. That's not to thank you off, Mr. Diaz. It's okay. Then what happens is you guys both meet up at the Dollar General, and now she walks in and she hands Aaron the phone. Yes. Okay. And Aaron goes outside and has a conversation with Raul. Yes, he did. And you're saying you have no idea what Aaron's demeanor or tone is during that conversation? He was upset. Raul was yelling at him through the phone. Okay, but what does upset mean? Oh, uh, like, well, I guess then you could say he was angered, yes. He was angry. Let me get another video. This is States 12, for the record. Again, I'm going to fast forward, okay? We're at 1 minute and 43 seconds. There's you again in the white belt and the orange colored tank top. Yes. And there's Mr. Robinson going out the door, wearing a shirt, wearing a hat, wearing basketball shorts or athletic shorts. Yes. Followed by Danielle. Yes. And Aaron's on the phone. Yes. Now there's another woman that's starting to come in the door there. Do you see that woman? Can you see her? She's on the left side there, kind of obscured by the door across uh, from Danielle. I think I see part of her head. Okay. Well, keep watching. But tell me, isn't she stopping and watching Aaron have a phone conversation? That looks like Emma Doe. I'm sorry? That looks like Danielle's mom. Okay. Now she's coming inside. It's 1.59 on the video. She's now turned and she's still turning back and watching somebody have a phone conversation. There's clearly some kind of spectacle going on, isn't there? She's watching something, yeah. She's watching a man on a phone yelling and screaming at someone. 
isn't she? I can't tell you what she was watching. Well, Is possible. Miss Miss Bryant, I can still see you on the video. You're turned and looking out the door too. Mm-hmm. You don't know what's going on outside. Your boyfriend's outside having a yelling match with somebody on the phone, and you don't even have any rough idea what's happening. I'm sure he's upset on the phone. Yes, I watched him walk out. Okay, and at any point, do you think, hey, honey, you know what? This is clearly getting out of hand. Just let it go. I did. So did you tell him to stop? After his phone call and we got back together, yes. Okay. So Aaron gets off the phone, and now you advise him, honey, just let it go, right? Yes. He doesn't listen to you. He did. He calmed down. He calmed down? Yes. Isn't the very next thing that happens is he calls his brother and his brother's friend to come up to the Dollar General? Because Raul said he was coming, yes. Okay. So Aaron is waiting for the fight. Mm -hmm. You've told him, honey, it's yes. not worth it. Yes. Yes, I'm sorry. You've told him, honey, it's not worth it. It's no big deal. You've persuaded him. That's what you just told us. And still he's decided, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to have a fight with a man. And I'm going to maybe get jumped. Right? Yes. Because what your testimony is, is that because Raul is Mexican, Mexicans always roll in big groups, and the worry was that Raul was going to show up with all his friends and his family. I also added, so does all their races. Isn't it true that when you gave your interview to law enforcement, the night that they came to talk to you and Aaron, you told them that Mexicans... Sustained. Did you suggest that because of the, the victim's Mexican heritage, that was somehow indicative that he was going to bring friends and family? Objection, hearsay. Why do you wait? Wait for? For anything. Why do you wait for James and Fluffy? Why do you wait for Raul to show up? He said he was coming. Okay. You're not obligated to wait for him. No. You could have said, honey, we got to go work on the truck. My mom's brakes need fixing. I could have. You could have said, honey, this is, this is really not a big deal. Yes. So why didn't you? I'm sure I said that it shouldn't happen and we should go home like we had planned. I mean, I don't exactly recall. This was so long ago, so I don't remember little things said. Isn't it true that you waited at the Dollar General for roughly 30 minutes? It could be true, yes. 30 minutes you sat in a parking lot with your boyfriend and his brother and his friend waiting for a man who you thought was going to come and attack your boyfriend. We were also speaking with Danielle. Okay, but why? Couldn't you talk to Danielle anywhere else? Oh, we just saw pants on fire with witness Kayla Bryant. That conversation being about cigarettes and not about inappropriate sexual comments. That was just brought out on Cross. Stay with us. You won't miss a minute of this testimony live right here on Court TV.